Before we take a look at each part of the planning process in more detail, let's check we're comfortable with the terminology associated with it. Firstly, what do we actually mean when we talk about energy performance? ISO 50001 defines energy performance as a measurable result related to energy use, energy efficiency, or energy consumption. Hence, there are three aspects in which you can measure energy performance. Let's explore their meaning in a bit more detail. Let's start with energy use. Energy use is defined as a manner or kind of application of energy. So the manner or kind of application of energy use could be related to a relevant energy driver or energy consuming activity such as production or a change in weather conditions commonly expressed as degree days. A relationship would exist where your energy consumption will vary according to, for example, a variation in production. This relationship could be further described as energy use per tonne of product. This type of description is often referred to as an energy performance indicator or ENPI for short. If nothing else changes, this relationship between the amount of energy used per tonne of product will remain the same. Energy efficiency is defined as a ratio or quantitative relationship between an output of a performance, service, goods or energy compared to an input of energy. So, if we then introduce energy efficiency measures, this will reduce the amount of energy used in the particular application, leading to a new relationship reflected in the ENPI. Energy consumption should also go down. The third and simplest form of performance measurement is based upon energy consumption or simply a quantity of energy applied. These figures may bear little or no relationship to a variation in an energy driver and care should be taken over this approach as it may include intended or unintended changes which may not truly reflect an energy performance improvement. For example, if you had a particularly warm summer and your process was food manufacturing, you might find that your energy consumption went up due to an increase in space air conditioning requirements, despite having introduced energy efficiency measures. If no relationship had been defined between energy consumption and the energy driver based on production, it would not have been possible to determine whether energy performance had improved as a result of the implementation of your measures despite the increase caused by the warm weather. Therefore, before you can start making improvements, you'll need to work out which are the areas of significant energy use, what the scope and boundary of your organisation will be, how you intend to assess the energy performance, and how you intend to measure energy performance improvement. Do note, if ENPIs are used to measure energy performance improvement, they should be relevant to the nature of the organisation in order to be an effective tool for energy performance improvement. And when it comes to significant energy use, please bear in mind that this could be a variety of sources, including gas, electricity, biomass or any other fuel, including secondary process heating. Assessing this may sound simple, but organisations often miss out key areas simply because data isn't available. Make sure you include an adequate period of data collection in order to get accurate results. You may also need to introduce metering in order to do so. OK, so let's look at each part of the process in more detail. The energy planning part consists of three stages. Energy policy development, energy assessment and energy review. A starting point for ISO 50001 is developing your energy policy, which requires top management commitment and resources. Your policy, as a minimum, should clearly state what your organisation needs to do in terms of achieving energy performance improvement within a suitable timescale. You will need a suitable capital budget and the support of top management. Top management need not to be involved in the day-to-day -day activities, so you also need to assign a management representative to deliver these activities. This could be your organisation's energy manager or a similar middle management role. This part should be communicated internally and the organisation can decide whether or not to communicate this externally. 
Once there is the commitment, you'll need to start the process of assessment. This involves assessing how much energy you currently use, particularly in areas of significant energy use, and how you intend to measure energy performance and the consequent energy performance improvement as a result of the implementation of the measures. Determining energy performance also depends on how you define the scope of your organisation and the nature of your organisation. Next, you'll need to conduct an energy review. This will help you to identify ways of improving energy performance. Part of the review involves developing an energy baseline. This should be specific to your organisation and will be essential for comparing energy use before and after implementation. Your baseline could be an ENPI as discussed, which could be a simple ratio or a more complex model. Whatever indicator you choose, make sure it's something that will allow you to make comparisons in like-for-like -like conditions. Otherwise, you could end up with misleading results. You may be wondering why ISO 50001 calls this an energy review and not an energy audit. An energy audit implies a one-off activity leading to recommendations for energy saving measures. This may be developed as part of an energy review, but the review is considered an ongoing process that responds to changes over time, such as change in scope and boundary of your organisation and or legislative changes. It's important to see ISO 50001 as a long-term commitment to continual improvement. So, the planning phase is now complete and you're ready to start the doing phase. First, draw up an action plan. This includes setting budgets with top management, assigning your resources, both financial and manpower, and deciding how to measure improvement. You'll also need to set some targets. Give yourself a clear time scale, say two years, and include regular targets for continual improvement. These should be challenging but achievable, as targets that are too easy or too hard can demotivate staff and weaken their commitment. Make sure you get the balance right. You can now implement your action plan. Make sure that you document everything you do, including any deviations from the plan and your results. This is a key part of ISO 50001 and you'll need it as evidence in any internal or external management system audits. You might also be able to use your ISO 9001 procedure if you already have this in place. 